if I can shift gears to the to the bot real quick. So um, one of the things that Elon constantly mentions is that about the bot is that it doesn't really fit. It doesn't really fit into the whole mission statement of Tesla of advancing the world's future uh, towards sustainable transport and energy generation and all that stuff, right? But then I really started thinking about, okay, so if the bot turns out to be a massive asset and value um, creator from a labor perspective, right? From uh, making things, helping make things faster, helping things uh, that are physical happen faster. And I think about the acceleration of the uh, transition to energy uh, you know, the, sort of the mission statement of Tesla, wouldn't the bot actually be directly on within the mission statement because it's going to help Tesla achieve its goal faster because they're going to be able to have folks at, like these bots in the factories and installing solar roofs and everything else like that over time? Like, how do you, have you thought about that at all? Or, or do you, like, is it kind of a sandbag statement by Elon to say it's not really part of the sh mission statement? Or like, how do you think about that? Like, how do you think about the bot within that context? I mean, if that makes definitely any sense, I don't know. To something. Yeah, 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 no, it's definitely onto something because I think there is a labor shortage and that's going to be, but I don't know. Okay. I personally think that's a really, the, the much bigger thing that Elon's thinking with the bot is that he tried to do open AI and he lost control of that organization or it's kind of doing its own thing. Mm. Governments aren't regulating AI. So now it's the question of who's going to build general AI first and whose hands is that going to be in? And he has decided it's going to be in the hands of Tesla shareholders because if it's not, then who else is going to own it? Mm -hmm. And so I think the bot is about so much bigger than automating all these other tasks. It's just about building general intelligence and Elon Musk wanting to do it in the best, safest way and being like, if I don't trust anyone to do it except myself. So even instead of doing open AI and setting a separate company, they want to let it do their own thing with that. I'm going to just run with it and do it within Tesla and nobody can stop me. And that's... So it's a little bit scary and weird, but that's kind of, um, I think Elon has decided that this will be commercialized inevitably. It needs to be Tesla. Relative to the labor and the mission thing, um, it blurs the line because I feel like you're kind of reaching a super far in the future. It's like, well, wouldn't Tesla building its own smartphone that was more efficient help the mission because then we could communicate faster and we would all like be working faster too? Like it's kind of gets to a stretch point of just like... Mm -hmm if society needs this and it advances society, then it's good for the mission. So that's a little too broad, but um, I don't know. I think this is going to be one of the greatest questions of Tesla. And I think that's why AI day was such an incredible moment for Tesla investors. Cause it changed the trajectory of Tesla's future. Like you see the, now, you know, branch of possibilities. Have you seen that graphic? Yes. Yes. Okay. So yeah. So to me, we just went on a new branch that I never mm. saw us going on, which is AI robots, not just this clean energy branch. Mm. And that's a very interesting decision that I never saw Elon making, but now he's made. And frankly, takes my end feeling of Tesla from this feel good, clean energy, benign thing to a potentially non benign, radically transformative AI robot company that will severely impact how humans change. It's not like, oh, I get up and I turn my lights on, but now it's sustainable. So that doesn't change life. Mm. It's now I get up and my robot starts making my bed. My robot's making me breakfast. I don't really need to see my friends as much because my robot's doing all this. And like, that's just a really different and weirder future that to be honest, I'm not like in like, yeah, I don't know. It'll make a lot of money, but I don't, it's, it's weird, right? Are you freaked out by it a little bit? Yeah, I'm freaked yeah. out by a robot who will be smarter than me and can walk around. That'll be really <laughs> yeah. weird. And I will not probably not feel comfortable with it in my home. Yeah. Like, honestly, like, I don't know. I it, but, but I'm also like, yeah, I'll be let I will adapt. And Tesla bots, if you're watching, I love you. Like, <laughs> They'll watch this at some point, you know it. <laughs> they watch it and they're like, was Gally, he was hating on us from back then. I'm always going to say a polite, like the Tesla bot. Yeah. Like, yeah. We love you, bots. We love you. We, everybody yeah, we loves you. To. Yeah. <laughs> Humanity is on your side, we promise. We're on your side. We created you. I mean. Yeah. <laughs> we are daddy and we love you. And it's also like, who doesn't get cooler than their parents? Obviously. Right. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Dude, that's so funny. Um, I, I was thinking about this last night when I was. Um, like, I don't know, sleeping or something. I, like right before I fell asleep, I forget when. But um, and it, I've, I've been spending a lot of time thinking about the bot and its its implications, right? And then what's what's been funny to me the whole time uh, since Tesla has gotten started, especially in the last 
two to three years is, uh, you know, maybe not the Tesla community per se, but the broader, the broader population. When they think Tesla competition, they're thinking Mercedes, um, BMW, Toyota, you know, legacy auto, right? Oh my God, that's the real competition. They're going to come out with EVs. But like my head, my brain is already, and maybe this is uh, maybe it, uh, to a certain fault, but my brain's already like, Tesla already has, you know, say they, as long as they continue executing the way that I know they can execute and they have executed, um, it seems like their their uh, chances of success when it come becoming the not only the largest auto manufacturer in the world but by far the most dominant when it comes to the self driving tech and everything like that appears to essentially be in the bag. But there is a lot of work to do. This is sort of my perspective. Okay, so within that context, I'm like, okay, so they've entered the bot uh, sort of side of the business, which we talked about, which is a, a gigantic almost divergence from their path, and now you have this entire new path. Tell me if you agree with this statement. Tesla's actual competition is Google and Facebook, not these car companies. What do you think? Yeah, I like where you're going with that. Um, I don't know. The word competition to me is just so, whenever I it gets brought up, it's almost like the analysis becomes pointless. I don't know. Mm. It's like, I think Tesla's competing with like itself. You know, like, mm. uh, like it, I think they compete with convincing humans to buy their products. Mm -hmm. And, uh, like, 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 can you make your product, can you make your Tesla bot human enough to where people accept it? You know, like, mm. I don't know. That's like, to me, the biggest thing that Tesla is competing with is like our old way of life, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> like, can you really convince people that your new way of life is better? Because Tesla's in terms of technology and speed and engineering prowess is just, there's no one that has that. Um, there's no one that has it, I think. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I don't know. Okay. And, and, and the reason, know, yeah, yeah. The reason why I asked that question is so, so <laughs> Tesla seems to be solving for, it's, they're obviously solving for the how how um, uh, a, a robot or an object that's physical with a computer and cameras is interacting with the physical world. So that's that's how, what that's the data they're gathering, and it's very obvious that they're doing that. Google is gathering a ton of data about how humans behave. Right? What are they searching? What are they looking for? What are they watching? YouTube, perfect example. Right? They're sort of building these like like. Um, models around how humans behave and what their things like the, their, their likes and dislikes are or what they usually tend to and how they react to those things. Right. And then you got Facebook who has that level of data, but they've actually crafted it around what a human actually looks like, where they live, um, who the family members are, how they interact with their family members. Like that's the kind of like data sets that Facebook has access to. And it sort of dawned on me last night because I'm like looking at my YouTube analytics and I'm like, okay, so I, I know the age groups of the people that are watching my videos. I know the male or female, where they're watching, right? These sort of very, very high level basic uh, points of, of data sets. But it's no secret that Google, YouTube have so many different vectors and points that they can draw information from, right? So I'm like, if I fast forward 10, 20 years down the line, could we exist in a world where Tesla is solving the, the physical interaction problem, Google is solving the behavioral problem, and then Facebook is solving like the, hu like how th the humanity problem. I don't know like, like how, how people, how, how to be actually human. And I don't know if you thought about that at all. And I don't know if there's some sort of like, like, again, the word competition, I use it, but it seems like those are almost synergistic in a way. Like if you combine those three things, then you have a humanoid robot that's going to look exactly like one is going to behave with the physical world exactly like how a human does. It's going to know about human things and it's going to know how to interact with other humans. Tell me if I'm like freaking batshit crazy. Cause like, this is what's been on my mind. No, no, for the last this is genius. Hours. This yeah. is super genius and I, and I love what you're saying and I, I get it. And it's almost like um, these companies are excelling at mapping the resonance of humanity in their own way and, and sort of like it's like a mirror of all these human actions and the more human actions they get, the better the picture that they're creating that mirror is going to be able to replicate humanity. Mm -hmm. And so it's almost like they're all taking new approaches to take human input in mass to develop an artificial intelligence which human inputs in mass are going to be the most valuable. And you're saying like all of these human inputs are creating three different beasts, which I think is super interesting. Um, but I, I also think 
when you explain it like to me this, it also makes me bearish on the singularity in AI because I almost think even, even saying, oh, you captured all my Instagram messages, you captured all my Google searches, you captured all my Tesla movements, you mm. s- you'll still be so far from my humanity. Um, even though those will be complex AI systems. I don't know, but l- I love what you're saying. And I think those three companies with that lens are the closest to like hitting the singularity, right? Yep. In their own way. You're saying combined, they have the best shot, but in their own way, they're all trying to achieve the singularity with a different data set and a different way of, of mapping human decision-making at scale. Yeah. And um, I love, this is big, dude. This is going to change the way that I think about it. And that's why I think Amazon is interesting because they know what people need, when they need, and how much they're willing to pay right. for it. You think about that's another data set of human decisions that's valuable if you're trying to recreate a human. Twitter's another one because you see how humans react to events and what they see in events, how that changes their reactions. Right. Like, um, yeah, and it's it's we're we're digitally mapping ourselves into the metaverse or this online world, and I think that's really weird, but that's where we're all going. And so, yeah, um, that's when I think about companies that are building things in the physical world. I all think of. I think about them as portals to the virtual world. So that's why I think companies building physical spaces I'm investing in, I think are so powerful because they're going to own our interaction with the digital world and like have a lot of value there. But yeah, it's weird. This is almost why I want to just live my life and not think too much about yeah, business. Right. <laughs> because I just think it's like just too like, um, you know, it's just like I kind of feel like I, I don't like where we're headed and I feel like I know where we're headed and I want to just live in the moment. Yeah. <laughs> That's that's such a beautiful statement. That's like my wife hounds me with that stuff all the time. She's like, be fucking present. Like, why aren't you present? Like, I love you, sweetheart, but be present. I'm like, I, I literally, this is where a lot of my mind space has been going, especially like the last five, six months since I stopped working at Tesla. It's like, I have so much time now. And it's like, my brain automatically goes to that end result. And I agree with you. I think it's becoming, it's, it's, it's becoming uh, almost increase, increasingly clear that the singularity is going to become a lot t- tougher to achieve because of how, like how seg- segmented these very important data sets are for those AI systems to really become AGI or whatever you want to call it. I, I, don't, I don't even know how you would achieve AGI because AGI theoretically would be a conglomeration of all these things put together in a sense, right? Because it's artificial general intelligence. It's something that should be capable of just solving things without, you know, that that isn't narrow, like a behavior thing or like a physical thing, right? So it's like, is there gonna be, a company needs to exist that essentially will have to bring all these data sets together to make that AGI possible unless, and obviously I don't, I know nothing about AI. I'm like the least AI expert in the world, but it, if I'm thinking about it from like a problem solving perspective, almost like a first principles perspective, like that's what you need. You need all those data sets for the AGI to actually know how to act. Because if it doesn't know how, you know, maybe I'm thinking about this incorrectly. No, no, I think you are. And I think that's why I think Tesla should buy Neuralink because I think Neuralink Mm. is the company that will displace Mm. Google and Facebook and be the third link. And and Neuralink's very important because it's not just what we output, it's what we think before we output potentially. So it'll be a deeper layer. So if I think who has the best shot at doing AGI, it's like Tesla with Neuralink almost, Whoa. which is why I think Tesla should buy Neuralink. And that's like back to my theory of like what Elon's thinking is like, this is going to happen. I'm going to do it because I can do it with the most good. And I don't want. Yeah. Wow. So it, and it's interesting you say that because he he always says that, you know, and it's obvious that he's incredibly worried about it. But like what you just said about Tesla buying Neuralink is like the actual um like thing that happens physically that enables that to happen right it's it's his but like from a business perspective and an actual reality perspective like that that action could theoretically set that in motion of creating that ai or agi that's safe safe for humanity and it does good you know wow i didn't even think about that holy shit and it's crazy because really it's not facebook and google in some ways it's apple because apple owns the hardware so, and this is just the software that runs it. Like in many ways, that's why I think Apple and Tesla are such competitors. Cause like, um, and then that'll where in the long trajectory of humanity, the fascinating thing will occur. Will that be Steve Jobs pioneered this computer to everyone, but Tim Cook was unable to evolve it to the place where it needed to be for the singularity. And therefore 
he's going to get Apple's sort of manifesting them being the singularity is about to get leapfrogged by Elon and Tesla. Mm -hmm. And so it's this interesting like arc of great entrepreneurs kind of building on each other. And also maybe in five years or 10 years, Elon's arc gets disrupted and he doesn't do it. But I just think it's really interesting how Apple was always on that path. And now I see Apple um, not on that path to be mm -hmm. that company kind of. Mm -hmm. do, do you think... Do you think most people our age are optimistic or pessimistic about AI? Pessimistic. And mm. I think they're pessimistic about the future, which is really bad. And that's why I think going back to what we're saying about like inspiration, I think that's like, I feel like if we decide the future will be bad, it will be bad. Mm. And if we decide the future will be good, it will be good. And so we just need to like decide that it's going to be good. But I feel like that team is losing right now. Wow. But I mean, you identified you identified the 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 root cause. If if that's true, and I and I tend to agree with you, is that the, the root cause the the first principle thing we have to fix is inspiration. So if folks are optimistic about the future, those are the people that are going to build the future. They're going to go out there and I actually almost build. It. Look at my mom is a cancer researcher, and I almost look at it as like a cancer, and that's the T cell because I think the cancer is the information of social media and media that makes us like really dumb and angry and polarized. And that's like a sort of information diet that we exist on, which we don't think of. We think about what foods we eat, but we don't think about what things, ideas we consume, but we think about the food we consume. So I think we're going to, that's going to change and that's happening, but maybe we don't put enough emphasis on the ideas we consume. Uh, but when we do, we're consuming too much negative ideas and too many dark ideas. And I just think that's why, like one of my new mottos is I don't fix problems. I expand solutions. Like when I go into companies and try and help them, like, mm. so I want to like inspire, I want to like, like not try and like shut off all these bad lights, but like make the little, like your channel, make these lights brighter and make like these like positive movements, like Tesla and like Arkimoto and like you know, the fun stuff happening in crypto, like those should be like things that we celebrate, that we excite and we inspire us and we should root for them. Like we root for sports teams. Mm. And I just think like, like the bigger, the problem, the bigger, the opportunity. I'm like, as much as this all makes me depressed and sad, I'm like, holy shit, this is so exciting because like, there's all these amazing ideas and stuff out there. And all we have to do is talk about it and get people excited. That's like what the world needs. And that's like what I'm good at and what I love doing. So I'm like, holy shit. Like on some ways it pisses, like, it makes me sad, but in other ways, I'm like, damn, all we got to do is talk about it. Like, shit, I love talking yeah. about it. Like, maybe like there is a way to fix it. So um, that's like a big, a big thing when my career is like, I'm, I want to architect inspiration on a mass scale and figure out how we can deliver that. And that's why I think people like Mr. Beast are so dope. Like, I love Mr. Beast. Like, look at these radical new thinkers. Like, he's just leveraging his audience to do good, to like get yeah. trash. Like, he doesn't know what he's doing to get plastic out of the ocean. But he's like, screw it. We'll figure out. We'll partner with the guy. We'll raise 30 million bucks. We'll get some. Like, these are the kind of people that I think we need to latch on to. And I want to like, that's the message I'm spreading to people. It's like, yo, if you have a good idea, like the world needs you to hear about it. Like the world wants people to get like, we need people to get loud with positivity and brightness and like optimism. And I think if those are like what you live your life by, you need to like spread that because the world needs it now. And like, wow. you know, dude, this is so inspiring for the people out there listening to this. If, if you're, if you're for some reason, um, inspired to go out there and talk about these things. If this resonates with you, do it, just do it, just do it. Right. It's, it's as simple as picking up that camera and there's talking into it. There will be an audience. We're proof of that. We'll listen to your stuff, man. Like it's or not even just not in a camera, even yeah. to your homies. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, exactly. I think that's also another big thing is like yeah. spread that positivity, like to your homies one by one is even also powerful that I yeah. think people, yeah. What a beautiful message, man.